It's been a few years since the crash of National Airlines 747-400 at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. As an aviation professional, as an aircraft maintenance professional, I think it's important to understand the mistakes of the past. There are many human factors associated with this accident, and I think many of us can relate to these. In 1985, I was a young A&P mechanic, 21 years old, working for a small air charter company in Indianapolis. We had Beach 18 airplanes. One of the things that I'd been told about the Beach 18 was that if you could fit it in the door, the airplane would fly. It was just what the old timers said, but I took them at their word. Now one day, a truck brought out a heavy industrial motor, motor and this thing was bolted to a couple of 2 by 4s and this thing weighed probably 2,500 pounds. We loaded it on the airplane, strapped it down, and a month later we had the airplane in for a 100 hour inspection. We took the floors out and we found that all the floor beams in that area were crushed and they'd be, been deformed most likely by this motor. Hell, I never considered load bearing strength. I'd had structures in A&P school, but I just didn't connect it. Now I've often thought over the years, what would have happened if that motor would have fallen through the floor in flight? I think the Bagram crash illustrates that even though we're not performing maintenance, we can be a party to a series of events that ends up killing people. Hopefully we can learn from this and not fall into that trap. That said, here's a brief summary taken directly from the NTSB report on the Bagram aircraft. On April 29, 2013, 1527 local time, a Boeing 747 operated by National Air Cargo Incorporated, also known as National Airlines, crashed shortly after takeoff from Bagram Air Base, Bagram, Afghanistan. All seven crew members, the captain, first officer, loadmaster, augmented captain, first officer, and two mechanics died, and the airplane was destroyed from impact forces and post-crash fire. The Part 121 Supplemental Cargo Flight was operated under a multimodal contract with the U.S. Transportation Command and was destined for Dubai World Central in the United Arab Emirates. The airplane's cargo included five mine-resistant uh, protected MRAP vehicles secured onto pallets and shoring. Two vehicles were 12-ton MRAP all-terrain vehicles and three were 18-ton Cougars. The cargo represented the first time National Airlines had attempted to transport five MRAP vehicles. These vehicles were considered special cargo load because they could not be placed in unit load devices or containers. They were restrained in the airplane using the locking capabilities of the airplane's main deck cargo handling system. Instead, vehicles were secured to centerline loaded floating pallets and restrained to the airplane's main deck using tie-down straps. During takeoff, the airplane immediately climbed steeply, then descended in a manner consistent with aerodynamic stall. The National Transportation Safety Board's investigation found strong evidence that at least one of the MRAP vehicles, the rear one, moved aft in the tail section of the airplane, damaging hydraulic systems and hydraulic stabilizer components, such that it was impossible for the flight crew to regain pitch control of the airplane. The likely reason for aft movement of cargo was that it was not properly restrained. National Airlines procedures in its cargo ops manual not only omitted required safety critical restraint information from Boeing and the manufacturer of the, of the cargo handling system, Telair, they had the STC, but it also contained incorrect and unsafe methods for restraining cargo that cannot be contained in containers, ULDs. Implications for human factors. We can look at the dirty dozen human factors and come up with a list of factors for this crash. Complacency. Now we all know there was plenty of room com for complacency. The pilots, the loadmaster, people on the ground. Some of the comments that were made. It kind of reminds me of my days working as, at the Air Cargo 135 as a young mechanic. We all know that we take things for granted and just about everything is important in one way or another. I won't take the time to go into the dirty dozen here, but there's plenty of other procedural problems, teamwork issues that were all involved with this accident. I never give up the chance to badmouth the Federal Aviation Administration, but in this case, the flight was operating outside of the surveillance of the feds. So maybe when those guys that we love to hate come around the shop and point out and nitpick little things that make my life miserable, 
the people that we've never met are somehow a little bit safer. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs>